week two of a series we're calling Crazier Faith. Somebody say Crazier Faith. Now some of y'all are like, I missed week one. You got to go back to YouTube and catch week, week one. But we're in a series or a collection of talks called Crazier Faith. Because I believe that this generation that believes more in Google than God needs an infusion of faith. And for the situations we're facing today in the world, it's not going to take just regular, lackadaisical, lazy faith. It's going to take, somebody shout at me, crazy faith. You ain't say it with your chest, say crazy faith. Just one more time, say crazy faith. And I believe that if we could, as a generation, get crazy faith, we could change everything that is around us. We just sang a song that says you're too good to not believe. But you sang the song, but you live different. You're the God of miracles, but if it don't make sense, and if it doesn't line up with my schedule, uh uh-huh, and if it doesn't work with my aesthetic, <laughs> some of y'all won't even post about church because it doesn't match your aesthetic. Ew. Ew. I'm going to be so in your business right now because God is looking for a generation of people that will say it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how it feels. It doesn't matter what they're doing and what they're doing as for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Can I get somebody to give God some praise right now? Musa, I'm too hyped already. Already. Calm down, Michael. Calm down. This week, um, I, 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 I released a book called Crazy Faith. And it's really not about the book. It's about the vulnerability of my life message. Like when you put out what you live every day, and you really expose the real you, like the crazy stuff you do that nobody else probably will get, but like, like you do it because somehow when you step out in faith like this, God begins to meet you at the place of your belief. I put it all in a book and, and, and I said, I want to be people's crazy faith coach and help walk them through the seasons of their life. And so I feel a little vulnerable right now because like people is just reading about my business. <laughs> They're all in my business right now. But I have results. I have results in the light from disciplines I did in the dark. <laughs> What God wants for us is to have crazy faith in the dark so that we can have results in the light. And so for everybody that doesn't know, I'm going to just tell you the 182nd version of my crazy faith story. Can we go real fast? Ready, set, go. I took over a church February 1st, 2015 with my lovely wife, Natalie, who's bad to the bone. (laughs) And... um, And 37 days later, I was in my quiet time and I wrote down a bunch of crazy things on this piece of paper. I was praying and I went to Google and I got an image of this arena in our city and I wrote Transformation Church on this piece of paper and I even spelled transformation wrong. (laughs) And I left it there because God doesn't bless where you pretend to be. He blesses who you really are. He'll take it with your mistakes and he'll take it with the edges not clean yet. He's looking for obedience. Okay, let me stop, that ain't my message. And the first thing I wrote down is the Spirit Bank Event Center will be Transformation Church, March 9th, 2015, 729 AM, Bella's Room. I wrote that down. I put all the details in my book, Crazy Faith, so get that if you want the juicy juice. (laughs) But five years later, I held the keys to that building. They built it for $54 million. We paid 10.5 for it and paid it in cash in six months. It's only crazy until it, okay. Um, One year later, God said, don't take your foot off the gas. There was an entire 
complex with 35 commercial businesses in there. Everything from a chiropractor to a state farm to um, a doctor's offices and even the land that Chick-fil-A sits on. You know, that's holy ground. <laughs> it was for sale. And God said, believe for it. I said, Lord, I thought you was doing the crazy faith thing with the building. He said, I, don't take your foot off the gas. I am not limited to what you think you can do. One year later, we bought the whole complex, the entire thing. So I thought God was done. One week ago. Oh, y'all missed it. They don't want no real-time miracles, Rich. They want the stuff back in the day. One week ago, I stood up in my church. As my church is watching right now, they already hype. They getting hype because they know what I'm about to say. We went and bought a literal business complex that looked like something that Stoney Ta Tony Stark built for the Avengers in like 196,000 square feet of office space. The new headquarters of Transformation Church called Transformation Towers. Y'all. Y'all not a church that rejoices with people. It has to happen to you for you to. I'm just trying to make sure. Because the same God that did it for me is the same God. Somebody shout at me, same God. Same God. We serve the same God. I'm just testifying. I'm just trying to spark something. I'm trying to make your baby jump. Because we serve the same God. There's some bougie people in the back like, I don't yell in church. You better calm yourself down. And understand, we serve the same. Okay. All of this happened, and it wasn't supposed to. In three years, me, and I know me, I led a church that started in the hood of Tulsa in a converted grocery store that we took over five years ago to be a church who owns some of the prime real estate in our city, over $67 million worth of real estate. And watch, watch, but that ain't the thing. And I have six months of community college education. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm just trying to make you see that what you think you need to do what God's called you to do may be something stroking your ego, but God needs obedience. He needs a yes. <laughs> He needs somebody to believe. He needs somebody to stand in the face of opposition and say it may look crazy, but it's only crazy until it happens. Rich, they drank coffee this morning. So this is part of my crazy faith journey. But I want to rewind it all the way back. And I want you to write this point down. Crazy faith is not where you start. See, I tell you the end of the picture. I tell you the big journey. But crazy faith is not where you start. It's where you find yourself after you're diligent and dedicated to exercising baby faith. See, everybody wants the big thing. It doesn't start with the towers. It doesn't start with cancer drying up. It doesn't start with the house or the car. It starts with being in your word every day. No, I know you post the Bible scripture, but you didn't read it. <laughs> it's baby faith. It's being obedient to buy the person's coffee behind you. Baby faith. It's the step to continue to serve on the team that they don't see your full capacity and they don't see your full um, um, expression. But you keep showing up and you're on time and you serve with the right heart. It's baby faith and today as I was thinking about baby faith I started thinking about my babies I got four kids and um, I'll throw a picture of my babies on the screen just because they cute <laughs> and it's their mama fault <laughs> but I started thinking about okay if, if my faith has to be small what do babies think about like, and then I started, the one in the middle, she's my oldest. 
Her name is Isabella. Looks just like her mommy. Um, and, and, and I remember Bella being about four years old and us riding in the car. And Bella loved looking out the window. And one day we were riding in the car and Bella said, Daddy, do you see it? I said, see what, baby? Up in the sky. Do you see it? And I look at the sky, it's like clouds. She said, no, Daddy. It's an elephant. An elephant is having a tea party with the princesses. And I look back, I said, baby. Uh, <laughs> she said, Daddy, do you see it? And I said, I mean, okay, <laughs> that might be an elephant. She said, now the elephant is twirling and dancing. Do you see it? But, um, and then something in me said, agree with her. You may not have the faith to see what she's seeing right now, but don't crush what she sees. I said, if you see it, baby, I see it. And she said, it's so beautiful. And God in that moment spoke to me and said, Michael, I need you to be more like that. And I said, what do you mean more like that? I need you to see it even when it doesn't look like a usual situation that you would see it in. And, and, and I said, God, okay, you're going to have to help this. He said, you need to start using, watch this word. I want you to write it down your imagination and I want you to write this point down the genesis of crazier faith is your imagination and the problem with most of us who are watching this message right now is that we have become so practical that we have lost the tool that God has given us to be able to create a different situation from what we're currently experiencing because somebody told us that was for kids. And God sent me here on assignment today to wake your imagination up again. Because the thing, look at her, the little golf class, because you don't even know how to do it. Because you're thinking so practical right now. But by the end of this message, your imagination is going to be more valuable to you than anything that you walked in here with. Look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. I love the Bible. So God created human beings in his own what is that word what is the word what's the root word of imagination genesis 127 out of every word god could have said he said god created every human in his image and in the image or the imagination of God, he created them, both male and female. He created them. Have you ever thought about it like this? Me and you were God's imagination. And I must say so, he did a good job. <laughs> Somebody look at your neighbor and say, he did good. He did good. <laughs> this is the first time that we see this idea of the imagination being the thing that creates things. And then he continues this theme in Genesis 12 with Abraham, who is the father of our faith. Y'all remember Father Abraham had many sons, whoa, whoa, and many sons had five. Wow, and I am one of them. That's right. Whoa, so let's all praise him. Right. Ha, ha. Okay, y'all went to the same youth group. Some of the people knew him like... That's for people who grew up in church and we, we really the same type of messed up. So you don't even have to worry. <laughs> um, but when he took Abraham and was trying to lead him on a crazy faith journey, Abraham needed an image. So what did God do? He said, uh, if, he, if he doesn't use his imagination to, to, to think about where I'm taking him, he's going to go back to what used to be. So he calls Abraham in Genesis 12 outside of his home and he says, um, look up into the stars. Number them if you can. He was trying to give Abraham a picture, an image that he could use. He said, that's how 
many people I'm going to make your descendants and that you're going to bless so many nations. And I can imagine that as Abraham was lugging all of his stuff and all of his family through the journeys, the only encouragement he had sometime was to look up and say, I know God wouldn't tell me to leave if he didn't have something better for me. Somebody say, look up. What is the picture, the image, the thing that's supposed to be playing in your head that you have now silenced because you don't have the ability to see that it could happen? Let me help you. Let me break that whole thing down. God's imagination created us. We are created in his image. Therefore, we can also create with imagination. I'm going to say it again. Because that was too deep for some of y'all. Some of y'all, let me come up. Let me come up. God's imagination created us. We were created in his image. Therefore, we can also create with imagination. Today, I have a specific assignment in the next 20 minutes. It's to, to, to unlock somebody's imagination. Let me give you the title of the message. Unlocking an anointed imagination. Okay, now let me help you. Unlocking, what do you mean, Pastor Mike? To open or set free. Some of y'all's imagination has been so chained up. And God said, today it's going to be free again. Anointed, watch this. So many people think this is a deep word and it's so spiritual, but it's very simple. All anointed means is God's approval. Like when something is anointed, it has God's approval. And when you have God's approval, it makes it easy or you get divine enablement. Like something, have you ever done something and it felt easier than it was supposed to feel? That was God's approval on something. That's why you keep having trouble with that boyfriend because his approval ain't on it. You're not, supp- you're not supposed to be with him. Why there's no ease with her is because God's anointing is not on that. You see how quiet and stiff some of y'all got? Booty cheeks just tight because you're sitting next to him. I understand. But what I'm saying to you is you want everything God to do in your life to be anointed. I approve that house you're staying in. I approve that job you're working in. I approve. So we want to unlock the anointed imagination. Now write write this down or take this in. Imagination is the ability of the mind to create new ideas or pictures. Not present to the senses yet. I can't see it, taste it, touch it, feel it. I sound like a Missy Elliott song. See it, touch it, touch it. I can't do it. Y'all ain't safe. Y'all. But I see something that's not here yet. Everybody that has a cell phone, raise your hand. In the chat, raise your hand. That cell phone was somebody's imagination 30 years ago. That wasn't real. It's real to you today. You will literally lose sleep trying to find your phone. But that thing was in somebody's imagination 30 years ago. (sighs) Voo Church. See, y'all think it's just about things. But this church, Rich, was in your imagination. When it was rendezvous, before y'all dropped the rendez, and it was, <laughs> I don't know, what did the rendez ever do to y'all? The other say, y'all just dropped it. We don't want that on no t-shirt, boo. Like, <laughs> but back when you were doing the young adult ministry, what you sit in today was in Pastor Rich's and DC's imagination. Crazy Faith, the book, when I did the series two years ago, the book was in my imagination. And what have you been shutting down that God is trying to birth? Because it doesn't look like you have the resources or the backing or the networking to make it happen. Today, I'm trying to stir your anointed imagination to see again, to dream again, to hear again, to write again, to be able to do. Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through 4. 
Jesus is talking to his disciples, and I've read this scripture a thousand times, but I never saw what I saw, and I'm about to show with you until God started talking to me about unlocking my anointed imagination. It says, about that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who, uh, Jesse, uh, <laughs> what's up, bro? Um, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? <laughs> They were looking for a compliment, a position. And Jesus said, let me teach these fools a lesson. Um, the Bible says Jesus called a little child over. Um, come here. Come here, Susie. Come here. Um, and he put the child in the middle of all of them. And then he said, you know what? I'll tell y'all the truth. Unless you turn from your sins, repent, and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. That right there is scary because so many of us have become a professional adults. And our adulting has now choked out our anointing. I'm going to say it on this side. I got bills to pay. I got things to do. I got to get married. I got to get snatched. I got to get beat. I got to get... It's all of these things that you got to do. That your adulting has now choked out the anointing of imagining. God could drop something on you and it, it's gone in a minute because you say, there's no way that can happen. I like, that's what we do. Like, God said, your family's going to be saved. But... God says you're going to lose 80 pounds. Somebody said, woo. <laughs> woo, me? But my question is, can you see it? Because right now, when I said you're going to lose 80 pounds, you start thinking about how much work it's going to take and how many donuts you can't eat. And how, like, but it started choking out your ability to even get an See yourself wearing that size four. Can I give you a key to the kingdom? Key to the kingdom. Be more kitty. That's what we just read. If you don't repent and then return, everybody was a child. Everybody was a child. And God said, let me give them something everybody can do. If you want a key to the kingdom, become more kitty. Not more immature, more kid-like. What do kids do? Kids trust. Kids believe. Kids obey. Well, some kids, y'all kids, I don't, I don't know. And one of the major things kids do is imagine. Let me show you a picture of Pastor Michael Todd as a kid. I want you to see this. As I was preparing for this message, this popped up on my memories. And God said, Michael, that kid knew more about me than you do. What? I, got, I, 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 mean, I, I can read then. I read the Bible. I pray. I give. And he said, and that kid trusted. And that kid obeyed. And that child could imagine things that were not around. I'd take a, 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 a bottle and go, vroom, vroom. And then I take the same bottle and I go, and then I take the same bottle and I go, what would happen if you took your current situation and you started saying, God, and you said, okay, God, and you said, every devil, bow, every day. All anxiety, bow. My question is, where did you stop believing? Where did your imagination die? Where did your imagination quit? And I understand because life has a way of coming in to kill our imagination from the time we're very young. 
Can, can I be very clear with you? All of us were raised differently. We had different circumstances and situations and things that happened. And some of us were abused and some of us were exposed and some of us weren't protected. And some of us got so much but never learned the value of things. And this is the thing, that, that, that it could be trauma, trials, turmoil, or tragedy. I don't know what it is, but it may have killed your imagination. And the thing I'm asking everybody to do in the presence of God this week is go back and identify where your imagination died. Where it became so business for you. So, no, 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 I'm not, I don't play them games. I don't, I don't, no, 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 no. Tell me. And God said, man, you, you're, you're choking out a tool that I want to use to get you to your future. Write this point down. Imagination is the engine of your faith. Imagination is the engine of your faith. How many people have a car in the room and in the chat? If you have a car, come on, everybody at City, everybody at Transformation Nation, okay, you got a car, okay? Some people are sitting there like, dang, why, why he say that analogy right now? <laughs> if you get this point, if you understand that your imagination is the engine of your faith, You'll go from not having a car to giving away multiple cars. Now, the reason I'm saying this to you is because your current situation does not dictate the plan of God for your life. Okay? So if imagination is the engine of your faith, faith is the vehicle to your future. Whatever your future looks like, you got to have faith to get there. I don't care if you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, be married, just be a nice person. You're going to have to have faith. I got a question for you. This is just a fun exercise. I want everybody this week to post and, and tag me in it. What kind of car or vehicle does your faith look like right now? No, 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 no. Not your dream car because your faith don't look like that. Somebody's like a Bentley. No, more like a Buick. <laughs> Rolls Royce. No, Rust Bucket. <laughs> like... And then I want you to swipe over and post what you want it to look like. Because you got to have faith for your future. But watch this. If you have a car with no gas, you can't go nowhere. So I'm giving you formulas right now. I'm kind of a teacher this morning because I like to teach the church so you can live this out. Run it back. Play it again. Let it get down in your spirit. Meditate on it. Pray about it. Search all the scriptures. Do all of that so you can actually have this as a principle in your life. Faith is the vehicle to your future, but hope is the fuel for your faith. If you do not have hope, what are you hoping for? Your faith can't go nowhere. That's why Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is the substance, the gas of things that are hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And that brings us to imagination then being the engine. You can have a vehicle, you can have gas, but if you don't have the engine to your faith, you are not going anywhere. So write that down. Your imagination, oh, hold on, let me stop. Because I was about to move and act like you can't replace your engine. See, instead of imagination being the engine, some of you, your intellect is the engine. I will. And since your intellect is the engine, if it doesn't make sense, I can't move. If I don't have all the details, this does not. If this wasn't a part of my five year plan. My 10 year, oh, I'm in somebody's business right now. So you have replaced imagination of what could be with intellect. I read what it says. But logically. And then there's another group of people that is watching today that didn't replace imagination with intellect, but you have replaced imagination with ignorance. So. I got hope, I got faith, but I'm ignorant of the promises of God. The reason you have to read your Bible is because there's guarantees and promises in there that if you do not get them, you will not know what you can ask for or believe for. 
And then there's another group of people who've replaced the engine of imagination with the engine of influence. If they're doing it and they're doing it, that's what I'm doing. And God says, could you take out all of those things? And would you be intentional about what you put in your spiritual womb? Can I say it like this? Your imagination is your spiritual womb. Whatever you start thinking in your imagination, that is the conception place of whatever you're going to see in your life. Can I prove it to you? (laughs) Can I prove it to you? When you put fear and imagination together, they make a baby. Anxiety is the baby of imagination and fear. You're imagining all the things that could happen that have never happened yet based on fear. And now you, it's anxiety. Now you popping pills and throwing back drinks and having sex with people, trying to calm down something that was birthed in your spirit through imagination. That's why 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, cast down every vain imagination that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Intellect exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Ignorance exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And God says, you have a responsibility. Tear it down. It's vain imagination. So how do I do that, Pastor Mike? Can I tell you how to practically do this this week? Imagination is purified in intercession. Didn't y'all just come off of a a whole series about prayer? And y'all did 21 days of prayer and transformation is about to go into seven days of prayer and fasting. The reason we pray is because whatever I imagine, because let's be honest, our imagination goes to some random, weird, dark, crazy places. And God says, I'm not scared of that. Bring it to me. Bring me everything you imagine and let me purify it. Oh, you think you're supposed to be married to them? Bring it to me. Oh, you think you're supposed to move to that city? Bring it to me. Oh, you think you're about to to start that company? Bring it to me. He said, whatever you birth in your imagination, you got to bring it to intercession or bring it to prayer so it can be purified. And this is the step that we miss so many times. We get this idea or we create with our mind and we forget to get it purified. And when it's not purified, it ends up destroying the very one that God wanted to use to do something great. See, see, l- let me show you this illustration real quick because I, I, I need everybody to see this. Proverbs 3, 5 says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. How do we acknowledge him? Through prayer. <laughs> and he will make your sh- path straight or direct your path. Write this point down. Intercession changes the focus. So I had this, I, okay, can I be real with you? I always knew I was going to have a lot of financial resources. I didn't know how I was going to do it. Maybe I was going to steal it from somebody. Maybe, maybe I didn't know how, but I always imagined myself being able to have a lot, but it was unpurified. So when I got a relationship with God, God said, yeah, 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 that was right what you were thinking, but you're not going to be blessed to just stun on people. I'm blessing you to be a blessing to other people. And when my imagination went to intercession, it got purified. What did it do? It changed the focus. Cameraman, work with me real quick. Everything, this is how it looks if you're watching online and back on the replay. This is how it looks when you get your imagination. It looks blurry. It's just blurry. Everything is not clear. But as you start to pray, God, you know I've been seeing these things. And you've called me to this city. God, you've shown me that I'm going to be able to employ people and change people's lives and walk into single mother's houses and be able to help them with education and diversity. And God, I'm asking you to show me how this happens. Do I do it on my own? Do I serve other people doing it? Father God, do I give what I have now? Do I save right now? As you begin to do it, what's happening on the camera right now is the picture is getting focused. And God is saying, some of you have been asking God for clarity but you haven't gone to intercession. So the images are running wild. 
But he said, how do we purify that? Pray. Come talk to me. Tell me what you need. Tell me what you're feeling. Do you know how this even happened to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? He's going to the cross in Matthew and he says, Jesus, this whole image that I got, I, I know I signed up for it before you sent me here, but I'm backing out. Don't want to do this. If there's another way. But he was in the garden praying. And in that prayer time, it changed him. It changed his focus. And then watch this. Intercession changes your feelings. It changed his feelings. Because as quick as he said, if there's another way, let it happen in prayer. Then he started saying, but not my will. Yours be done. When you go to intercession with your imagination, it'll change your feelings. There's things that I felt before, and, and I was sure I felt like that. And I took it to God. He changed my feelings. Some of y'all, you go to prayer with Dominique. God, I just know Dominique is the one because he got the things. And he got the things. And I know, I know God, whenever our marriage comes, I know he got the thing. <laughs> Oh, y'all going to act fake with me today? And you'll go to prayer with Dominique. And God will change your feelings. You'll come out with Daniel. Daniel, God! Well, his glasses do look a little cute when he... The little glasses and his suspenders. And God will change... (laughs) He'll change your feelings. Last thing intercession will do. Intercession will change your future. See, when I have this wild imagination, God says, bring it to me in prayer. Bring it to me in intercession. And in intercession, I'll change your focus. In intercession, I'll change your feelings. And in intercession, I'll change your future. That's why James 5.16 says, the effective, fervent prayers of people who are righteous They avail much or they work. And all I came from Tulsa, Oklahoma, in this kimono, sweating, (laughs) is to tell you that God wants to unlock your anointed imagination, dream again. Get up in the morning and say, God, show me something I've never seen before. Show me my family healed. Show me me, show me without depression. Show me a uh, Show me a picture of myself walking in confidence. Show me. Give me an image. I was created in your image. And God, you created us through imagination. So, Father, I imagine myself whole. I imagine myself healthy. I imagine myself free. Somebody say, imagine that. Can I show you a real life example of imagination? I told you that one week ago, I told our church, that, that, that we got the transformation towers. But what people didn't know is on the day, June 25th, this summer, while I was on sabbatical, I went to that building and they told me it was gonna cost $35 million to buy. Now, I don't know about you. <laughs> 35 mil ain't just like something you throw. <laughs> and as I was coming down the elevator, God said, will you partner with me on something I'm trying to do? He said, get an image of it. I said, okay, okay, what what did that mean? He said, baby thing. Do something that you can do at this current moment. So I said, I said bye to all the realtors and the people. I was like, (laughs) drove out like I was leaving and uh, turned back around, came back in that parking lot, and I recorded this video. Take a look. So I'm making this video in crazy faith. I am uh, trying to put my mind around what God may be doing right now. I'm standing in front of this business complex, 197,000 square feet right off of Highway 75. And I believe this is gonna be Transformation Business Park where we will subdue, rule, dominate at this area for the kingdom of God to be expanded. You cannot have a kingdom without domain. 30 acres um, 
prime real estate. And I believe God's going to give it to Transformation Church for the expansion of God's kingdom to reach. All the way around here is absolutely gorgeous. Just toured the building, and I'm claiming it right now. And one day I'm gonna play this video, and people are gonna call me crazy right now. How can a young um, church led by an African American leader buy up the most prime real estate in a city? It's because if God be for you, who who can be against you? Today, I'm just standing out here in crazy faith. Got the park, car just parked and open. Just, I don't care. I'm just out here. Crazy faith. It's only crazy until it happens. God, do whatever you want to do. Provide. Do what you did with the other building. Do what you did for, for everything that we've ever put before you. And if it's you, make it happen. We trust you, God. And we believe you. One day, we're going to shout about this, y'all. wants to ignite your imagination. That's all I came here to say. That's where everything's about to start. Imagine your family together not fighting at Christmas next year. Just imagine. It don't, you ain't got to make it happen. You're just like, there's no way Raul will ever be in the room with Rebecca again. But you can imagine it. Imagine yourself actually celebrating your friends instead of being jealous of them. Oh, I'm, I'm talking about real stuff. Imagine yourself loving your spouse after they've hurt you and you being restored. That means better than before. And it's like it never even happened. Somebody say, imagine that. Hands lifted all over this room. God, I'm praying that you would unlock. Ooh, I feel the presence of God. For every person watching this live, every person watching it in every service, every person watching it on rebroadcast, I thank you at this moment, now faith, you would unlock the anointed imagination of every one of your children. That you would show them visions and dreams and pictures and images of the future that become reality as they bring it to you in intercession. Purify our imagination. Purify our thoughts and our hearts. And God, this thing you want to do is all for your glory. Not so that people can look at you, but Father, so people can find you. We don't want them looking at us. We want them to find you. So ignite our imaginations. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the imagination of your children what you plan to do for us. So all this week, God, unlock us. Unlock us. May we walk in the key of the kingdom to become more kitty. Let us trust you. Obey you. Imagine for the glory of God in Jesus' name. Right there with everybody's eyes still closed and heads still bowed, there's some people in here that need to imagine themselves free. Free from the burden and the bondage of sin. Free from the weights of the things you've done and the things that have happened to you. And Jesus, he made a way for what you don't even think can happen in your life for it to happen he went to the cross and he stretched his arms and i believe he was imagining you walking in joy peace wholeness 
but there's only one step all you have to do is accept him into your heart it is the greatest decision I ever made it took me from being a liar a manipulator somebody who was addicted to pornography somebody who had an insurance fraud case somebody who had dark things in their heart and it didn't make me a perfect man but it made me a progressing man because I gave over control of my life to God and I started imagining myself whole healed free helping others and today that is available to you if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and give your life completely over remember what it said you need to repent all that means is turn you've been going one way turn you've been going to the club turn you've been going to drugs turn You've been going to those websites, turn. You've been going to money, turn. But don't just turn to something else, turn to Jesus. If that's you, we're gonna pray. On the count of three, I just want you, everybody's not looking at you, this ain't about you, this is about your eternity. On the count of three, if you're saying, Pastor, I wanna be included in that prayer, I'm making this decision today. I want you to just boldly lift your hand up in the air. One, you are making the greatest decision of your life. Two, I am proud of you, but more than that, God is proud of you. Three, just shoot your hand up in the air. Oh man, there's hands going up everywhere. At your house, on the track, right now, wherever you are, just shoot your hand up in the air. You can put your hands down. Several in every service. Now, Transformation Church and Voo Church, we're one big church today. And so for the benefit of all those who are coming to Christ, we're going to all pray this prayer together. Will somebody with crazy faith just say, Lord, thank you for sending Jesus just for me. I believe he lived and he died and he rose again with all power for every one of my mistakes. Today. I give you control of my life. Change me. Renew me. Transform me. I'm yours. I imagine myself free, whole, delivered, and helping the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, can we turn up?